In this first volume of the Play Pool video series, we shall be covering these basic skills of the game so often neglected. Learning how to address the table and adopting the perfect stance. Forming a strong bridge hand, so vital for successful play. Actually holding the cue correctly. You'll be amazed how this improves your game. Professional techniques will teach you how to sight all your shots accurately first time, every time. Perfecting a smooth cue action, crucial in your progress to the highest levels. Adopting the correct stance when playing pool is one of the first skills to master if you wish to improve, as mistakes made here can affect your whole game. A common fault prevalent amongst amateur enthusiasts is that they have a tendency to rush in and hit the balls without stopping to think properly about their current position on the table and therefore the type of shot that should be played. As Jason is now demonstrating, it is essential to remember to take sight of the shot before you get down on the table to play. You will often see inexperienced players shuffling about and adjusting their stance once they are down. This tactic will only serve to ruin the rhythm of your stroke and the usual penalty paid, as we can now see, is a missed shot. More seasoned players make sure they choose the correct position before approaching the table. Pay careful attention to Jason's textbook stance. The feet are planted a comfortable distance apart to enable him to get his chin right down onto the cue, as we see now. If the feet are too close together, the back leg will bend and make the whole stance unstable. This must be closely guarded against at all times. The weight should be placed slightly forward on the front leg with the back leg rigid acting as a bracer. Placing equal weight on both legs instead of leaning into the stroke will cause the head to jerk off the cue as the stroke is delivered. The front leg should be bent slightly, paying close attention not to let the knee drift outwards, which is a frequent error and results in a marked loss of cueing accuracy. In order to be able to cue straight, the front knee must point in the same direction as the stroke, as should the front foot. Most British professionals believe in getting the chin right down to the level of the cue, as the nearer the eye is to the actual line of aim, the more accurate that aim is likely to be. Whatever head position is adopted, one basic rule remains constant. During the movement of the cue, the head must not move at all. Ideally, if possible, it should remain completely still until the object ball is in the pocket or has come to a total standstill. Resist all temptation to end your cue action with a flourish or violent movement of the body. It may look impressive, but it will do nothing to improve your game. Some aspects of a perfect stance may feel awkward or uncomfortable at first, but with practice, the adoption of the correct stance can make all other facets of the game easier. Let's go over the main points again. Remember to take sight of the shot before you get down to play. Keep your feet a comfortable distance apart. Position your weight slightly forward so your stance is leaning into the shot. Never fall into the trap of adjusting your stance once you are down at the table. You'll miss the pot. The back leg should remain straight at all times during your cue action, steadying the shot. The front knee should be slightly bent, taking the weight forward into the stroke and allowing you to get your chin right down onto the cue. Avoid jerking your head off the cue as you strike the ball. With the exception of your striking arm, aim to remain completely still during your stroke. And don't end your cue action with a flourish. With practice, all these skills will require little or no effort and will become a natural part of your preparation in forming the perfect stance. At this point in the video, I think it would be a good time to take a short break and take a look at some of my favourite trick shots. This first trick shot, the 8-in-1, came about when I was challenged to perform a perfect 8-ball clearance in one stroke. It is very difficult, but not impossible. Here's how it's done.
pretty impressive, eh? If we switch to the overhead, we can see that I cannon the three reds in. The black ball travels around the table, up the cues, and back down again, cannon into the four reds to make a perfect eight ball clearance. If attempting the eight in one shot gives you a nasty headache, which I promise you it will, this next trick shot is perfect for you. I call it the backflip. The idea is to hit into the cushion in such a way that the aspirin is flipped into the glass. Now watch again at the table side camera. The cue ball springs the aspirin up into the air and down into the glass. Perfect. The next section we shall be covering is the bridge. A firm, solid bridge hand is imperative to achieve accurate striking of the cue ball. Many pool players make a very poor bridge, perhaps unaware of its importance. Even amongst good players, there is often a slight wobble in the bridge hand which can affect the line of the stroke. As the bridge takes most of the weight forward from the body, it is vital that it remains firm throughout the cue action, since any movement at all will definitely affect the accuracy of the delivery. Notice how Jason's bridge hand is rock solid and does not move at all during his cue action as he is addressing the ball. The importance of this cannot be stressed enough as the bridge forms the basis of many of the more complicated strokes we shall be discussing later. From this angle, we can see as Jason pots the yellow, the only part of his body that moves is his cueing arm. The bridge stays perfectly still. Where there is room on the cloth, as with most shots, the correct method of forming a strong bridge hand is quite simple. Having first decided on your stroke, addressed the table and positioned your feet in the manner we have discussed, stretch your bridging arm right out and place your hand on the table with all fingers splayed as widely as possible. Draw the fingers inwards, keeping them taut and straight. Grip the cloth hard with the pads of your fingers and cock the thumb. This method makes a very strong bridge hand, fastened securely to the table and provides a smooth channel for the cue to slide through. Notice how the bridging arm should be straight, thrust out from the shoulder as far as it will go. You should feel a line of tension running from the bridge hand through the left arm and shoulders right down to the cueing elbow. This tension ensures a well-braced upper stance and you will find that the striking arm hangs loosely from the elbow, swinging easily and independently without affecting the rigidity of the upper arm. This is exactly as it should be for the correct motion of the cue in a straight line. Unfortunately, you will not always be able to place your hand flat on the bed of the table. There are occasions when you have to bridge over a ball or a group of balls to play the white. In this situation, the only contact the bridging hand has with the table is through the fingertips and is therefore far less stable than with normal cueing. A change of stance is also required to a more upright position. For these two reasons, when faced with this sort of problem, it is advisable not to attempt difficult or dangerous shots. Another situation where it is impossible to form a normal bridge is when the cue ball lies near a cushion. Trying to play from the edge of the table can be a nightmare for some beginners and often results in embarrassing miscues. As we can see in close-up, even though the fingers provide the only support on the table, it is still very important to make the bridge as steady as possible. To achieve this, a good stance is required. Notice how Jason's bridge hand remains perfectly still as he pots the yellow. Hitting the cue ball at pace when it is on or near the cushion, as Jason is now demonstrating, is not easy at all. The extra speed in the stroke will exaggerate any flaws there may be in your bridging. When playing a powerful shot, you need to bring the fingers right back to the edge of the table to allow a longer backswing, but be warned. Because this position offers even less support, there is a greater tendency for the bridge hand to waver and lose control of the stroke. So, whenever possible, avoid playing power shots from off the cushion, as it is very difficult to strike the cue ball accurately. Get in the hang of it yet? Good. Well, you can relax for a couple of minutes now, because we've got two more amazing trick shots coming up. After all that talk about bridges, this next trick shot is quite apt. I call it the over and under shot. 
what I'm going to do is to pop the red ball into the corner pocket, jump the white over the rest, back under the rest, and pop the black ball into the middle pocket. If you don't believe me, watch this. As you can see, I'm bouncing the cue ball into the red, pull it into the corner pocket, sending the white over the rest with enough backspin to screw under and pop the black into the centre pocket. Right then, as the over and under shot took so long, I think I better show you the fastest ever trick shot. I call it the four in one. Four balls in four pockets in four tenths of a second. Don't blink or you'll miss it. I told you not to blink. As we can see in slow motion, I'm forcing the cue ball down the centre of the table, potting all four reds in under half a second. Any player cannot play consistently well unless they adopt the correct method for holding a pool cue. The most common error is to grip the butt of the cue too tightly, promoting a snatching stroke and hindering the all-important follow-through, which we will discuss later. The cue should rest on the pads of the middle joints of all four fingers. The grip itself, however, must be made with the thumb and the first two fingers only. Normally, the hand grips the cue about an inch away from the end, as we can see here. When you are playing a power shot, however, such as the break and a maximum backswing is needed, it may be necessary to shift the position of the grip to the end of the cue. This is not the only time that this strategy is required. Another occasion that demands a change in the way you hold the cue is when you are faced with the problem of overstretching, as Jason is illustrating. As with the power stroke, the cue must be gripped right at the end and is therefore more risky and difficult to play. There is little that can be done besides coaching and regular practice to make power shots any easier or more reliable. But in the case of playing at full stretch, modern technology has come up with an answer. Notice that as Jason stretches for the black, his feet and stance at the table appear uncomfortable. To remedy this, some of the better pool cues today have a built-in telescopic mechanism that allows a player to adjust the length of the cue in seconds to eliminate any problems of overstretching. The shot can be played comfortably and the cue returned to its original length without any loss of concentration. Let's watch Jason again, but this time with an extended cue. Notice the many advantages telescopic cues offer. His feet are more securely planted. The grip on the cue is now in the correct position. In fact, his whole stance now appears more comfortable and stable. Yet another type of shot that requires a change of grip and one that most players find difficult is playing the cue ball very slowly. For these shots, it is necessary to move the grip up the cue to shorten the cue action. This strategy is particularly useful when you are playing a snooker and just want to roll the white ball slowly behind an object ball. If we watch the same shot again, notice also that a different stance is employed, more upright with the chin well above the cue to help gauge the distance. During play, you must try to avoid tension in the finger and arm muscles, but at the same time guard against being too relaxed. These faults will ruin your timing and merely serve to increase the probability of error. A clever way you can assess the degree of firmness needed in the grip is to put your cue on the table and pick it up by the butt with your cueing hand. The pressure required to take the weight is roughly the pressure you should use to hold your cue during normal match play. It is important to get this right if you are going to be able to play some of the more advanced shots we will be learning later on in the series.
If you want to try this next trick shot, you're going to need a friend to help. I hope he's watched the previous coaching section, because if he doesn't know how to hold the cue properly, it ain't going to work. I call this shot the rail spin. What I'm going to do is bounce the white off the red onto the rail with enough backspin to screw behind the yellows and pop the black off the piece of chalk. If you thought the last trick shots were good, you ain't seen nothing yet. Once more in slow motion. The white ball jumps up onto the rail with enough backspin to finally pop the black. While we're on the subject of how to hold your cue, here's an impressive trick shot that goes against all the rules I've just been teaching you. It's called a masse. You may have heard of it. Let's watch it again in slow motion. You can see how the cue ball swerves in a tight arc around the yellow to finally pop the black. Striking the cue ball just where you want and intend to strike it is perhaps the most difficult thing in the game of pool. It is without doubt the most important. The cue must remain practically horizontal all the way through the stroke. It is also vital to maintain a flat action and avoid any lateral movement whatsoever during the delivery. This rule applies whether we are studying the bridge hand or the cueing arm and stance as a whole. It is important to get this right as the consequences if you don't will greatly hinder your progress. If the cue is swinging sideways at the moment of impact, the chances are you will not strike the white along the desired line of aim and it will be thrown off its course. Hopefully by now you are already a more competent pool player. Once you have mastered the techniques of approaching the table and adopting the correct stance, as Jason is once again demonstrating, you will be ready to move on to the next stage. This is learning to strike the cue ball on exactly the intended spot after bringing the cue through in a straight line. This process is called the cue action. There are six main points to be taught in order to control and maintain a reliable cue action. Practice strokes. Backswing. Pause, strike, follow through, and stop. The practice strokes, or feathering as they are sometimes called, are the initial movements of the cue before actually striking the white. The importance of these strokes must not be underestimated, as they are essential to help with your rhythm and timing whichever shot you want to play. Of course, when you are playing, you will probably never notice this part of your cue action. But if you got somebody else to watch you, they would possibly be able to gauge if you are playing well or badly purely by analyzing the way you are feathering. Take a look at Jason in action as he executes a perfect eight ball clearance. Pay particular attention to his practice swings and notice how they are steady and rhythmic for each shot. From this angle, watch how Jason is able to cue right up to the white without actually touching it, of course, during his practice strokes. This is a sure sign of a good and confident player. When you are in top form, the number and length of your practice swings will remain constant, as we are now witnessing but will more often than not vary if you are slightly off your game. Once again, queuing up very close to the white.
This has been a perfect illustration of how steady practice strokes will promote accurate timing, so crucial to all other aspects of the game, which as we have seen can make an 8-ball clearance look easy. When practicing these strokes, remember, as with all shots, the whole body must be motionless except for your cueing arm. Beginners may find it quite difficult to go right up to the cue ball when practicing their feathering, as Jason is showing us. They tend to commit the error of stopping the cue too far back. It is well worth persevering with your practice strokes until you are able to consistently achieve an even, rhythmic action. In most situations, the backswing part of the cue action benefits from as short a distance as possible. The more you can cut it down, the greater control you will have over direction. Potting will become easier and more precise. Of course, it is not possible to restrict the backswing in all situations. A power shot, for instance, would require a longer backward stroke and not simply a faster delivery. The important thing to realize is that the way you bring the cue back will dictate what happens throughout the rest of the cue action. Once you have cut the backswing down to a workable minimum, a very useful tip is to introduce a split-second pause before making the final forward drive of the cue action. An analogy could be drawn with the game of golf, where the professional pauses at the top of his backswing. Note how Jason pauses here before finally striking. This pause will give you time to secure complete control of the cue and will prevent many common faults we have already identified, such as head movement and snatching. It brings about better potting and enables you to gauge the desired pace of the cue ball. The next element of the cue action to examine is the strike. Whatever the type of shot you are playing, you must be positive with the hit itself. A hesitant, jerky stroke like this is no good at all. Back in the studio, we see even if you are playing a very gentle shot, a clean, firm contact between the tip of the cue and the white ball is still required. This is where the practice swings and pause elements of the cue action can make a significant difference. As we have learnt, they govern the rhythm and timing of each shot, essential to the successful striking of the cue ball. Concentrate on the professional's cue action at the moment where the cue tip strikes the white ball. As we watch the replay, we can see at that point his forearm is in a vertical position. A frequent problem is striking the cue ball either before or after the forearm has reached the correct upright position. Consequently, the cue will not be driven through on a parallel line and at best unwanted top or backspin will be applied. At worst, you will miss cue. Whilst we're on the subject, the use of any type of cue ball spin, be it top spin, backspin as we now see from the overhead camera, or without doubt the most complicated of all, applying side spin to the white, should not concern you at all at this stage. The many advantages of these skills, especially in the art of positioning the cue ball, are fully explained in later play pool videos. The same principles of keeping a cue horizontal applies to the follow through, a crucial part of any cue action. Obviously, you have to stop the cue at some point, but the extent of the follow through depends on the type of shot you wish to play. If you are unable to master the follow through concept of the cue action, you are going to find cue ball positioning very difficult indeed. Probably the best way to illustrate the effect varying the length the follow through can have on cue ball control is to sit back and watch the routine Jason is executing here. All four yellows are roughly the same angle and length of pot, but for each one Jason is employing a longer follow through than before. You will notice that the speed of each stroke is approximately the same, so pace is not the reason for the differences we are witnessing. As he pots the final yellow, it is obvious that changing the length of the follow-through is the cause for the resulting positions of the cue balls.
you manage to take in everything about Q action in one go, you deserve another trick shot break. Most professionals use this shot in their exhibitions because it really is one of the best. It's called the 6-in-1 and is about the only shot I can think of where six balls are potted in six different pockets in one shot. You saw it briefly in the introduction to this video and I think it's well worth another look. As you can see, I'm forcing the white through the pack of yellows pop one in each of the pockets. When I'm feeling really confident, I set one of the balls a little out so I can pull it second time around with the white. A similar looking shot to the 6-in-1 is the Black Pearl. It seems impossible to pop the black ball from this position. It looks completely trapped by all the reds. Not true. Watch this. And again, close up in slow motion. See if you can figure out how it's done. Coming up in future play pool videos. Learn how to make the most of your break. Understanding potting angles and how to play them. Tips and hints on how to double successfully. Discover how plants can create match-winning opportunities. The secrets and strategies behind complex set shots. How and when to play cannons. Learning how to engage backspin on the cue ball. Playing the white with topspin. Conquering the difficult stop shots. The theories behind playing with drag. Imparting side spin and how to control the cue ball. How to make complicated reverse side spin look easy. Impress your friends with some great swerve shots. Making the most of your practice time. Learn why your shot selection can win you matches. and all the secrets revealed of some more amazing trick shots. <laughs>